Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our session on uh, Citrix LTSR 24.x. Um, the reason I put .x in this opening slide is because um, as we prepared for this webinar, I saw references to LDSR 2401, 2402, 2403 EAR. So I figured I'd put .x for now and have our friends from uh, Citrix slash uh, Cloud Software Group uh, explain to us what exactly is going on and, and what is the version that, uh, that will be released uh, shortly. Um, so before I get started on that, I uh, just want to wish everybody happy leap year, happy leap day. Um, I'm not sure what the what the correct greeting is, but uh, let's go year day and we'll go from there. Um, I'm joined today by Jonathan Maxa from Citrix. Um, I, Jonathan's going to introduce himself here shortly. Um, before that, I just want to uh, get on with some uh, kind of housekeeping items. Um, towards the end of the webinar, excuse me, actually after the webinar, we'll be giving out the uh, Uber Eats gift cards for uh, all of the eligible attendees. Um, so stay to the end of the session to uh, ensure you're registered. Um, we move on to the next slide. Um, in terms of an agenda, I'm going to take uh, maybe 40, 45 minutes to talk about Zintegra. We'll let Jonathan talk for four or five minutes, and then we'll wrap it up. But uh, no, I'm just kidding. I'm going to talk for 10 minutes, maybe, and let Jonathan uh, uh, steal the thunder and, and walk through everything that's uh, new and upcoming with the latest LTSR release uh, from Citrix. And then we'll leave the, the door open for maybe 10, 15 minutes at the end for uh, some q and I'm sure there'll be a, a lot of questions about the new features, upgrade paths and whatnot uh, to move to the latest release. Um, so before we really get into the meat and potatoes of what we're here to do, which is talk about Citrix LTSR, I wanna talk about Zentegra Canada specifically for a few minutes if I could. Um, so this slide that's showing right now is, is really the essence of Zentegra and what we do. So we have the expertise, we have the experience, and we certainly have key partnerships. Uh, one of those being you know, our, our long, long time partner, Citrix. Uh, so these three items that we're showing here, our expertise, experience, and the partnerships allow us to provide you know, that end-to-end -end support for everything related to digital workspaces. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Barry Brown. I'm the Vice President of Sales and Solutions for Zentegra Canada. Um, I've been in the industry just shy of 25 years now. Um, you know, there's not too, too many wrinkles in that, in that picture of me. Um, I'm responsible for all sales and technical services uh, for Zintegra Canada. Uh, relatively new. Uh, I've been, to, been with the company just shy of uh, 14 months. Um, before that, I was working, um, you know, in the field. As they say, I was the director of IT for a large contact center uh, in eastern Canada. Um, don't let the... Uh, the uh, title fool you, you know, where it says sales in my, in my title. Uh, I'm a geek at heart, um, uh, VMware V-Expert, IGL v VIP. I have expert level certification on Citrix, a couple of VMware VCPs. So a uh, bit of a bit of a nerd. I like the uh, propeller hat. Um, so like I said, don't let the, the title fool you. Um, I'm also a computer, com community champion, which is part of the reason why I joined Zintegra. I truly believe in in community as, as give, you know, giving back to the to the, to the ecosystem. So I'm involved with the IGEL community, the VMware community, Citrix community. I'm a CUGC leader, uh, VMUG leader. Uh, so I'm certainly, uh, I'm out there in the, in the public eye. And just kind of, I love the opportunity to do these webinars and kind of explain a bit about, uh, you know, my passion for our community. Um, for those, I saw a lot of familiar faces in the registration list. And uh, for those of you who actually know me at a, at a personal level, you know, I'm, I'm a big geek for, uh, when it comes to reality TV. And uh, my favorite guy is uh, Mike The Situation. And one thing I always, tell my team is, you know, we didn't come this far just to come this far, you know, as, as corny as it sounds, it's really, you know, what gets me out of bed every day to continue you know, providing, you know, these services and solutions to our customers. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's corny, but it, it works for me. Um, so Zintegra at our core, you know, we're VAR, you know, we can't beat around the bush, a VAR is a value-added reseller, um, but we like to say that we're a VAR 2.0. So what does that mean? Um, we know that any of the VARs out there today can sell products, uh, services, and, you know, no, knobs and toys and widgets. Um, but we stand behind the products that we sell with a team of technical experts and staff to architect, implement, and, and support the products that we sell. Um, I know from personal experience that the uh, consulting team within Zintegra is best in the business. And the reason I know that is because I, when I was a customer of Zintegra at my previous role, I actually hired uh, Zintegra for a couple of uh, a couple of projects in the in the EUC space, and uh, they uh, knocked it out of the park. So when I had the opportunity to join, uh, it was a, it was a no brainer to join uh, a team of experts. Um, so one thing I want to kind of highlight from this slide, you know, we are a VAR, we are we do offer consulting services, but we also have an MSP practice. Um, so for those of you who don't know, managed services essentially is a way of um, 
outsourcing is not the right word, but uh, we, we can certainly take on the task of doing your tier one, tier two support. And, and to some extent for a particular product, uh, we can offer tier three support. So that means instead of having to go to, you know, vendor A, vendor B, vendor C, um, you get that single throat to choke. And, uh, you know, that, that throat is unfortunately mine for some of this, but uh, a lot of our customers are really taking advantage of that MSP offering we have. Um, another thing I want to highlight for potential customers is we are, we offer these um, complementary assessments. Um, so what's a complementary assessment, you ask? It's um, essentially someone from our solution architecture team will work with you and your team um, to you know, assess your environment, whether that's Citrix or, or VMware, iGel, ServiceNow, you name it. We will <clears throat> excuse me, we'll take you know, this expertise, spend four or five hours with you. Uh, free, and we'll go over your environment and tell you what's good, what's bad, and you know what could use some improvement. And uh, at the end of that engagement, we'll give you a report saying, you know, just like I said, you know, where you could use some help and where you're actually, um, you know, excelling. Um, so I encourage everybody to take advantage of that. It's, it's a no-brainer. I know when I was a customer, I used it twice, maybe three times, and it was it was certainly very valuable. <clears throat> Excuse me. So. Zentegra as a brand, we're certainly known as the Citrix guys, if you will, because we've been the Citrix partner from 2012, I want to say. Um, but Zentegra is made up of, of five different companies. Zentegra Canada, which is, uh, you know, my world. Uh, we have Zentegra India. We have Zentegra Gov, which covers the sled fed space in the U.S. Um, we also have Zentegra One, which covers uh, small and medium businesses. And of course, we have uh, Zentegra MSP, which I've, you know, mentioned earlier. So from a, from a people perspective, we have over 100 technical specialists on staff. And you know, when I say technical specialists, we're talking about you know, fully trained, fully certified on solutions we sell. Um, you know, we have certainly, have, we have some CTAs, we have some TTPs from the Citrix side and a, a bag load of Citrix certified experts, not just on the virtualization layer, but also on the networking side. So that's uh, within the Netscaler suite of products. Um, we, have all, we have a number of CCE dash uh, e, uh, Ns, I guess they are, not Vs. Um, I mentioned earlier that we are, we are known in the industry as the Citrix guys, and there's a good reason for that. If you look at some of the awards we had kind of before COVID 2019, uh, Citrix Worldwide Partner of the Year, Innovation Award winner for North America, lots and lots of Citrix awards, excuse me. But then, you know, COVID came along. And uh, with that uh, synergy that went away, uh, the Partner Summit went away, excuse me. And of course, the awards went away with that. So as Citrix kind of rediscovers itself as, as you know, we, Brings this, or as it refreshes itself. I certainly hope these uh, these awards come back, and uh, if they do, I know I know Zentegra is going to be right up there, uh, like gunning for that partnership partnership of the year again. Um, this is probably one of my favorite slides in this deck. It really really simplifies what we do as a company. Um, we provide solutions, we provide services, and of course, you know, like any of our out there, we can sell products. Um, but I certainly hope the takeaway from this slide is not just that we can sell products, it's the value we add behind the products we sell. So this, this Integra stack, what we do, uh, simple. We do end user computing. We're known in the industry as being the expert in that space. Uh, we're certainly tar targeting uh, major, major cloud initiatives, not just in you know, Azure, but also AWS and GCP. We have a, a, a very, very robust uh, networking practice, um, not just uh, Fortinet, but we also cover, you know, Anybody where you can make switches, routers, we're in that space. Uh, you know, Cisco, all the big guys. Um, and relatively new for Zintegra is our is our security offering. So we've hired a number of uh, experts in the field to kind of launch that practice, and uh, we've been very very successful. We hired the best talent available uh, to kick off that practice. I want to say that was about eighteen months ago, and it, it's it's going it's going very very well for us. Uh, so I encourage you if you have any security initiatives to to reach out to you know, certainly with to myself and I can engage with the correct people on the uh, Zintegra side of the house. So some of our partners, um, obviously Citrix is top left, numero, numero uno. We've been doing Citrix work for the longest time, um, but we're certainly uh, working with uh, more and more vendors as day goes on. You can see some big names here, iGel, Microsoft, Nutanix, uh, AWS, Ring Central, um, Netscaler, of course. So we do we do cover the, the gamut of products, and you know I've mentioned a couple of times that we are the Citrix guys, but we're also becoming the iGel guys, the ServiceNow guys, the Salesforce guys. So we're, we're doing a lot of different things in a lot of different areas. <clears throat> so the real key takeaway from this slide is that, you know, we have real world experience. All of the technical folks within Zintegra um, were recruited from um, various organizations across the across North America. 
um, you know, from various fields. So IT directors, managers, sysmins, cyber people. So that way we, we know we have best of breed. So we invest very heavily in the technical team. Um, and the reason we do that is so we can provide uh, the best digital workspace possible for our customers and the best digital workspace. What does that mean? Fewer clicks, less lag, late, less latency. As you can see in the slide, there's no reason for me to, to read that off for you. Um, so we did talk a little bit about uh, VAR 2.0 and some more uh, offerings that we have. So the complementary assessments we've covered, uh, the educational webinars, well, if you're here, you're sitting in one. Um, something that um, may not be well known, we certainly we do hands-on workshops as well. And that's essentially, you know, one of our team will, will build, walk through uh, a lab. So we'd build out a Citrix infrastructure together. We'll walk through implementing FAST. We'll walk through implementing uh, Citrix Gateway, you know, various workshops that we do uh, with any given partners throughout the week, or excuse me, throughout the year. Um, we do a bag load of podcasts. Um, we have podcasts on Citrix, and I encourage you to go listen to uh, the most recent episode because we talk uh, very specifically about uh, the LTSR release that is uh, uh, just about to be released. Um, we also offer really, really discounted conference passes. Um, so 90% off. Um, that's for you know all the major conferences out there. IGL Disrupt is coming up in, in April, and we've committed to bring a lot of customers with us. So excuse me, if you're interested in coming to any of the various major conferences that are out there, uh, please visit zinhegra.com slash events, fill out the form, uh, meet with somebody from our team, and uh, we'll have those conversations. Um, the final thing I want to talk about is that our Work Has No Boundaries campaign. You may have heard this before. Last year, we gave away two Ford Broncos uh, to, to an existing customer. And this year, it's actually, we, we kind of turned it on its head a bit. And this year, we're, we're offering a, a fully week's paid vacation to Hawaii. Um, so I believe Chase is going to put the link to the details of that in the, in the chat here. So if you're interested in uh, going to Hawaii for a week, uh, visit the website, check it out, enter your information, and we can, uh, we can go from there. Um, so before I turn it over to Jonathan, um, there's a couple of housekeeping things. Um, we do kind of want this to be interactive. So please use the Q&A in the chat. I'm going to be uh, you know, putting on my moderator hat, and uh, I'll interrupt Jonathan as needed with the questions. Um, the gift cards are going to be given out right after today's session. Uh, somebody from our marketing team will be in touch with the uh, with the details, and uh, we can go from there. So with that, uh, Jonathan, I'm going to turn it over to you. If you can take on the show and walk us through all the awesomeness that is Citrix LTSR. Awesome, great. Thank you so much, Barry. It was great to hear from you, and you know, every view of what the uh, the Zentegra team offers. You know, it's really uh, we're really partner focused these days, um, and you really need to look at your partner relationship and look what they bring to the table and can it help your organization move past just processing paperwork and Zentegra can really do that. So thanks for that, Barry. Um, just an overview on who I am. My name is Jonathan uh, Maxa. I work at Cloud Software Group um, and I'm based here in my home office in Maryland. Um, I'm kind of long in the tooth with Citrix as well, but not quite as Barry, long as Barry. Um, I first got my exposure to Citrix back in 2004 uh, during the presentation server 40 days. Um, so I've worked extensively with the technology stack uh, for 20 years. I joined Citrix officially back in 2015 as a consultant, um, supporting our U.S. public sector customers. Um, and at the start of 2022, I transitioned to pre-sales. And right now, I currently assist our managed partners, such as Integra, kind of drive partner-led sales opportunities. So um, just a happy uh, fact for today, it's a leap day, it's kind of an unusual situation. Um, so if you have any uh, nieces or nephews or children that are really into math, you have a one five hundredth of a percent chance of being born today. So if you know anyone that was born on a leap day, it's almost like winning the lottery. So. Kudos to you if you know someone that was born on a leap day. Um, just to go over the agenda for today, we're going to talk about uh, Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop's long-term service release. Um, I've been told <laughs> it's 2402 is going to be the actual number, but that may change. So don't hold me to the fire on that. Um, we're going to talk about the key technical enhancements and capabilities of this release. Um, there's hundreds of technical enhancements uh, when comparing back to the last LTSR, which was released about two years ago. So we won't have time to get into all that, but I kind of extrapolated the big ticket items for this presentation. 
um, to talk about. Um, next, we'll talk about upgrade considerations for both uh, in-place and parallel upgrades. Um, so just to level set the playing field here, um, Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktops, or CVAD as we affectionately call it, is, um, you know, it's extended software support for a five-year period after its release date. It's really designed for enterprise organizations that are probably um, more risk averse, don't need to be tip of the spear in terms of innovation. Um, I've seen a lot of LTSR releases in healthcare, um, US public sector, um, as well as um, financial institutions as well. Um, one thing that is interesting about LTSR is it does include updates with uh, bug fixes and security updates. Um, and they will release what is known as cumulative updates um, every about four to six months or so. And we release a LTSR not every five years, but we look to release an LTSR every 18 to 36 months. Um, with this virtual apps and desktops LTSR, we will have a LTSR for workspace app for Windows. Um, that support timeline is less than the five years you get with CVAD. Um, it's three years and you have a maintenance time window of about 15 to 18 months. Um, one of the big things that you're gonna see with this latest release is um, the introduction of auto scale. Um, we were probably one of the first in the industry to introduce this capability around 2019 for the, the cloud, the, the race to the cloud, right? Um, we kind of took a step back and we realized that there was this balancing act between um, compute consumption costs in the cloud and people to have flexibility to be on-prem. So we've introduced Autoscale uh, for on-prem. Uh, this is kind of a, a, a huge achievement. Um, we, wanna, we wanna make sure that our users have that correct balance between uh, cost effectiveness and user experience. Um, we wanna be able to you know, empower organizations to kind of give them the ability to address demands um, to fluctuate no matter where they reside. Uh, so there's a lot of um, capabilities with our auto scale capability. We take data from several sources. We can look at load evaluators for hosted shared desktop, usage patterns, um, schedules, time limits. Um, so you can kind of have the utmost flexibility to provide the best user experience. And I think when we introduced auto scale for on-prem, our top priority is user experience. It, it's not so much cost. Um, it's there for cost for hybrid multi-cloud um, because you know, you're know you you're paying for that, that, that compute consumption um, from the hyperscaler, but we wanted to kind of give this uh, as an option for our customers um, to really give them what resources they need and, and where they're needed and give them that flexibility. We kind of rewrote everything so we can control the uh, and interact with the libraries from the hypervisor to kind of dynamically scale resources um, whenever we want. So we have um, scale machine and catalogs across sites or zones. Um, if that site or zone isn't on prem or it's in cloud, um, you know, you have so much flexibility there. And I think it's kind of unique in the industry uh, that no other vendor can kind of provide these capabilities that what Citrix offers. And also uh, drain state is another one that's kind of interesting is it um, allows you to uh, scale down for uh, single session uh, client OSVDAs and a delivery group to a pool size or a buffer as well. So kind of this drain state concept is kind of unique to Citrix as well. Um, kind of switching gears kind of fast just to cover as much stuff in a short timeline. Um, but one thing that we've introduced in the past year or so is the um, idea of giving our users and administrators a centralized platform 
to kind of configure, manage, and update the workspace app. I think right now there's a situation where we're having a situation where we have managed devices, we have unmanaged devices, we have people coming from a, a LAN or a WAN, and we have all these ways to uh, configure and optimize workspace app that kind of spread the gamut, right? Um, you can have group policy, you can have registry, you can look at the default ICA, you can look at PowerShell, you can look at the st storefront configuration file. And we want to kind of make administrators more efficient and have kind of a centralized platform to kind of control workspace app across all OSs, both managed and unmanaged. Now, you know, is this something that's going to replace your existing MAM or MDM solutions such as Intune or Workspace ONE. Um, no, it, it really isn't intended for that. It, it's kind of intended to be a centralized platform for management that is more effective and uses a, an API modern architecture. Um, so, this, uh, like I talked about, kind of improves the management capabilities of Workspace app. Um, one thing to note for this is um, it's not GUI based, it's API powered. Um, so you need to be able to associate your organization with Citrus Cloud. So you need to have the onboarded to Citrus Cloud, but you don't actually have to have a cloud entitlement in terms of a licensing standpoint. So if you're saying, hey, I don't care about Citrus Cloud, I'm on-prem, can I use this? Um, yes, you can use this. Um, it's kind of a three-step process from a high level to get started. You need to claim a domain or URL from the Citrus Cloud admin portal. And then you kind of need to create a DNS discovery record using uh, API. And then you need to map the service URLs to uh, the configured settings. So it's API based. So if you're not familiar with tools such as Postman or not familiar with declarative configuration options like YAML and JSON, it may not be something that you wanna pursue right now. Um, we are trying to make it less um, API configuration centric and bring more capabilities to the GUI, um, but it's just not there now. But if there is a need to kind of get a better control of Workspace app, whether that's enabling app protection, configuring multi-stores, version control, display settings, audio settings. Um, this tool is definitely there for uh, you guys to use. And please leverage Zentegra and their cloud labs and tenants to kind of get a better idea on maybe how this will fit into your organization. Okay. Um, another uh, thing, just a, a quick uh, question, if you don't yeah. mind, from the, from the Q and A. Uh, the mm -hmm. question is, um, you need Citrus Cloud to use a GACS. Yeah, you need to be onboarded. Um, okay. You don't need actually a DAS licensing entitlement, but you need to actually be onboarded to Citrus Cloud. Um, so your Citrus, your My Citrus logon needs to be associated with your org ID, and you need to be onboarded to Citrus Cloud to use it. Uh, there's a lot of stuff on developer docs. You got to look on Citrix developer docs to get the API nitty gritty on this. Um, but yeah, does that help? I think so. Um, Stefan, okay. if you have any follow up questions, just throw them in the chat and I'll interrupt Jonathan again. He doesn't mind that. <laughs> Thanks, Jonathan. <laughs> hey, you know what? As long as you're not watching Real Housewives, Barry. You know, I can, I can, be, all, I can be all for the reality. Jersey Shore for show. life. Some of it's just. <laughs> Terrible, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, to get back to business here, um, one of the nice new en en enhancements that uh, Spivad has introduced is the new um, MSIX app attached capabilities. Um, this is the latest and greatest um, app packaging and format uh, from Microsoft. One cool thing about this capability is admins can place the MSX I, uh, the MSIX application package on a shared drive and then add it to an existing delivery group. Um, you can actually repackage, update the application to 
file and then rediscover it in studio um, or web studio and they'll get the updated version. Um, it's kind of a new way for app management and app delivery. Um, I don't have too much real world experience with it, but a lot of our enterprise customers are starting to look into it. I was told <clears throat> that their uh, engineering team is looking to roll out workspace app within this format as well. Um, so more to come here in terms of uh, MSIX packages um, and its ability to support virtual apps and desktops. Uh, Jonathan, a question in the chat. Does the MS, MSIX stuff work similar to AFI packages in Studio? Um, my understanding is it's easier. Um, there's not as much um, permissions constraints with the actual file package. But like I said, I, I haven't been hands on with it, Okay. Um, but it's out there. And I just want everyone to be aware that the capability exists. Um, and will exist with the new LTSR release. Um, another thing is, is, is people that use uh, virtual apps and desktops or Citrix DAS for uh, video teleconferencing, there's been a lot of enhancements here with the latest release in terms of multiple uh, video streams at different resolutions to the endpoint. Um, in this latest release, we've removed the problem of the lowest resolution with the highest network latency negatively impacts the, the teleconferencing experience and teams. Um, so this has been a combination of a bunch of efforts where we um, upgraded our AVI codecs for graphics and our um, HDX audio codecs as well. So it's been a, like a combination of a lot of enhancements from engineering to kind of work to address this. Um, but it's been kind of neat. We also have a lot of uh, enhancements for um, volume sync between the VDA and the client. So if you have your volume set on the endpoint and you log into the VDA and you join in the teams, um, it will be synced. Um, also echo cancellation enhancements for both HTML5 clients and Chrome OS. So our top use case here would be like the integrated mic and speaker on the endpoint, not so much having separate, uh, but there's a lot of improvement as with that capability as well. The next thing I'll talk about is um, a director. Uh, director is gonna get a, a massive overhaul in terms of empowering admins and frontline support to kind of understand root cause of performance issues for virtual Citrix sessions. Um, I think this enhancement will bring us more up to speed to third party digital experience monitoring tools that customers may have been using in the past. I'm really excited about this one. I think this has been a long time coming. Um, I'm really great. I'm really grateful that engineering made this a priority um, to kind of tie in um, capabilities to kind of pull in additional metrics for faster triaging and understanding of uh, root causes of of issues, whether that's ICA latency or frames per second, um, consumed bandwidth versus available bandwidth. Um, to kind of empower admins to kind of gain a deeper understanding of issues without having to uh, pull information from, you know, HDX Insight from ADM and Director and maybe a third party tool or, or you know, using multiple technologies to kind of get to the same solution, if that makes sense. Um, another enhancement that we have is Storefront. <laughs> Storefront is getting a large update for a UI enhancement that will match DAS and Workspace. Um, Storefront, from a UI standpoint, really hasn't had any changes in probably over five years. And those 
changes five years ago were pretty minimal. Um, one of the things that will be neat with the new uh, storefront UI is the ability to uh, use what is known as Activity Manager. Um, it will be the capability for users to manage their apps they have opened and running on virtual machines across any devices. So if they want to um, force power off or force quit, um, if they want to restart the machine and boot it up again, granted, if they have rights to do that, uh, hosted shared desktop, maybe not, um, log out. Um, so just more cloud technologies brought to on-prem storefront. And then um, the final <laughs> retirement of the MMC-based studio um, for CVAD will go away. Um, it will now be web-based and be API powered to kind of support initiatives for infrastructure as a code. Um, we just released our Terraform providers for public cloud. <clears throat> so we can kind of help with our capabilities with automation. Um, Netscaler has been automated for over three years now, but virtual apps and desktops has kind of been behind them. So we're glad to see automation kind of coming forward um, with um, capabilities that engineering has introduced to the product. So more to come on that. Um, I, right now, the Terraform providers are limited to public cloud. Um, so if you want to use them for vSphere or you want to use them for Acropolis, they're not there yet, um, but it's being worked on. So that's very exciting. Uh, Jonathan, um, uh, before uh, you move on, just while we're on to director topic, there's another question in the chat here. Um, mm -hmm. Will director have a better export option? I'm not sure what's meant by better. Um, so I'll let you interpret that. Yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I like to say yes. Um, I know uh, old director was very reliant on OData. I, I don't know how OData relates to the new director. Um, and I don't know details on export capabilities as of right now, but fingers crossed, I like to hope it's better. <laughs> okay, and just another another quick question is with Studio um, moving away from MMC, is that the last MMC based products to be moved to modern UI? Um, my understanding is app layering is still MMC, and I think WEM is. I okay. don't, I don't, I don't know of anything. Um, I'm not aware of any roadmaps for them to be moved. I'm sure it's going to be worked on. It's just probably not a priority right now. Got but it. yeah, I think there's some other technologies that are still be um, in the MMC. No, oh, Miguel says PBS still is too. Yeah, yeah. PBS, okay, so. thank you. Um, so I wanted to kind of talk about um, CVAD and Azure just from a centralized identity standpoint. I think um, there sometimes could be confusion on what's supported. And if you look at this slide, I highlighted um, what's supported. Of course, traditional AD, like tried and true is supported. And then also um, Hyper Azure joined, where we kind of have identities created in on-prem AD and are synced with Azure AD through AD Connect. So just so if someone asks, hey, can we join our VDI to Entra or Azure AD on CVAD? No, you need to be on DAS um, to support that. Um, also, if you have a situation where you have a machine catalog that's non-domain joined, um, and you want to provision that out, let's say through MCS, <clears throat> you need to um, you need to be on DAS to, to support that capability. Um, this chart is a little conceiving. It, I like to think of it as as next hop or communication paths as you traverse for the for the columns. So as you converse uh, traverse the storefront workspace, CVAD, that's how you kind of make sense of it all. Um, but I highlighted what 
needs to be top of mind for engineers and, and directors and leadership is that if you're going to stay <clears throat> on-prem and not use the Citrus Cloud Control Plane, um, please stay on the AD join or hybrid Azure AD join for now. Um, we are have a lot of um, additional enhancements that are kind of in private tech preview right now. One of the ones that's been kind of popular is um, domain pass through single sign on uh, that support FIDO. So think um, YubiKey, think Windows Hello. So um, if your client is connected to a domain um, and you have that capability uh, there with Workspace app and the endpoint, you can do um, kind of passwordless single sign-on to the VDA. Um, another one that's kind of been worked on that's been a long time coming, uh, and this is for our DAS folks or people that are considering going to Citrix DAS, um, is single sign-on without FAS. So if you're in intra ID and you're joined intra ID, you don't need FAS anymore to do single sign-on. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, PM's been, been really working on that. It's been Microsoft. It's been some of the blockers to get that rolled out. Um, but we're, we're having that pet, we're pit bull mentality and kind of latching on and just holding on and hoping we get results. <laughs> so... Um, it's coming. So um, let's see here. Migrations. Oh boy. Gosh, this used to be really scary years ago. You know, I I, I remember going through um, a Zen App six five upgrade and just being terrified. Um, but now I, I think we've created so many options and avenues to kind of take the fear out of it, right? Um, one thing that you want to be conscious of for people that are on CVAD 1912, which I think probably a lot of customers are, that was the last version that wasn't enforcing the hybrid or universal license for public cloud. Um, so you couldn't tinker in public cloud if you upgrade past that. So please be conscious of that. Um, if you want to know if you're entitled for public cloud, you need to make sure that your license says Citrix Universal or it says DAS hybrid rights. If not, um, you need to really test to make sure you don't get bit in the backside in terms of licensing entitlement. If you're in a, on an older version prior to 11.12.1, you want to make sure you upgrade that first. Um, critical points to note is it the new LTSR will not support server 2012 R2, which I think some of us expected since it's been out of mainstream support for a while from Microsoft. Um, I was a little surprised to see that we deprecated support of SQL 2014, but we have, um, so be conscious of those limitations there. Um, I think in terms of risk and upgrade, I think storefront is one that comes top of mind for me. Um, when planning an upgrade, just because we're introducing the new UI, we'll still support the old UI. Um, and I forgot to mention that. So if you have the old, if you're using storefront and you have customizations and you, and you want to keep the look and feel, that will be in the wizard as an option to select. But I've gotten bit in the backside with storefront in place upgrades. So just be conscious um, if you're going to do that route to make sure you back up the configuration files, the web.config, default ICA um, before you proceed. Um, we have a in-place upgrade path in our eDocs website. It's pretty easy to find. Um, basically, you start off with your license server, you go to storefront, then you go to director. If you're using PVS, you should upgrade PVS next. And then you upgrade a segment of your delivery controllers, uh, let's say in a particular zone, if you have that, um, then you need to upgrade studio and restart and then kick off the database upgrade, assuming that the admin has DB owner rights on the site database, which most folks have that set up. Um, and then you upgrade your remaining controllers, um, upgrade your master image, push it out. It hasn't changed over the years. I think a lot of 
admins that have been working with Citrix for a few years will be comfortable with the upgrade. Um, I think we provide a lot, so much flexibility um, in terms of what you can do and what you can't do. It's, it, it, it gives you a lot of choice. Um, uh, Jonathan, a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, first one is, um, is there a step-by-step -step, step CTX article on storefront updates? Um, Scott's mentioning that the process can be somewhat flaky. Do you know if there's a detailed guide? Yeah, there's 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 stuff out there. It's just digging on the doc site and getting lucky with the the search. But yeah, there's there's a lot out there. Um, make sure you export the configuration. You back up. Take a snapshot of the VM. You know, I I almost uh, build net new if I can get away with it. If I'm in a situation where I have a net scaler in front of a couple storefront servers. I'll take storefront server out of service from the load balancing service group and I'll just rebuild it and, and test it that way um, internally with the um, IT team. <laughs> um, but yeah, there, there is a backup um, option within the storefront MMC and there's a lot of stuff on eDocs on, okay. on upgrading and backup and restore. Okay, and kind of part two of that question is, can you phase in the new storefront while you're retiring the old? So have it have a, a new install of storefront and have the existing older storefronts, I'm guessing is the question? No, I mean, it would have to be um, users. You, you'd have to divide it up. You'd have to control it via Netscaler um, and session policies at Gateway, AAA, and kind of, control it that way at the access tier. Um, but you really can't run both at the same time for the same set of users. <clears throat> Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Um, so requirements in terms of infrastructure, um, just be conscious of on-prem hosting, uh, what's supported, what's not supported. Um, I'm sure most folks are on vSphere or uh, Nutanix. So I highlighted here in this option, uh, VDA support options, Windows 10, Windows Server 2016, uh, maybe use this as an opportunity to get off those OSs. Um, you know, it's a compelling event to, to kind of build net new. Um, do you really want to carry over Windows 10 and Server 2016 um, as part of your upgrade path. Um, we don't officially support Proxmox. I know we've gotten a lot of questions about that. Um, MCS will definitely not work. Uh, you know, will the VDA software install on a virtual machine? Most likely, but you won't be in support. Um, also, we don't support Azure Stack HCI yet. Um, I expect it to be on the roadmap, but some people that have gotten the buzzword of Azure Stack and support with um, Azure and on-prem has kind of peaked up for some of our enterprise customers. We made a ton of enhancements with Linux. I mean, we could do a whole session on Linux enhancements. We're seeing a lot of uptick in Linux use because we're seeing app developers just prefer Linux. Um, and, you know, unfortunately we can't support a virtual Mac OS. Um, so Linux is just seeing a ton of innovation um, in terms of what we offered. We've offered a lot of um, the, the personal desktop experience options for Linux have improved. We used to just offer GNOME. Now we offer KDE and, and Mate. Um, we've overhauled our troubleshooting and diagnostics tool for integrating Linux with a CVAD site. Uh, the XD ping tool has been totally overhauled to kind of make the troubleshooting and, and debugging process easier for admins. Um, so uh, Jonathan, just there. before you move on, there is, there is another question on storefront, if you don't mind. Um, mm -hmm. Do you know if you could do an OS upgrade on storefront server or will it need to be built from scratch? Yeah, both from scratch, definitely. Okay, cool. Yep. 
built from scratch. Um, I think um, one of the tools that most people don't aware of is um, the automated configuration tool. Um, it was kind of designed for migration to cloud, but it can be used to kind of take the desired configuration state of your CVAD site and kind of validate it against another environment. Um, so you can actually use it between um, uh, you know, data center locations, colos, on-prem, public cloud, and it kind of gives you granularized control of, of machine catalogs, applications, and policies, what to move at your own pace. Um, I've, I've, I was involved in a project where we used it once when it first came out, um, and we were successful with it. Um, so just be conscious of that capability. Make sure that you, um, you know, back up your, your relational database for the site prior to the upgrade. Virtual machine snapshots are, are a good way to cover your backside. Um, make sure a local host cache is enabled because technically you should still be able to launch sessions when local host cache is enabled. Um, you just can't make application publishing and machine catalog creation changes when you're in LHC. Um, leverage Netscaler, leverage you know, load balancing storefronts to kind of create a new store to, to map to your new environment. Um, there's so many options for migration. You know, reach out to Zentegra, to, you know, pick their brains on, on what they have experience with, what, what's been successful. If I had to put risk, my, 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 my biggest riskiest concerns in terms of upgrade, it's, it's storefront um, and it's kind of um, endpoints that are legacy or have a lot of peripheral devices like multiple displays, um, thin clients. You really want to account for UAT, user acceptance testing, and make sure that that testing is validated from the knowledge workers because you can't just send out an email and say, hey, can you test this? You need to actually get proof um, so you're not held as responsible for the upgrade issue. So yeah, this is uh, pretty much what I have. Um, I know we're getting kind of close up to time probably. Um, Barry? No, I think that was that was a good session, Jonathan. Um, there's no there's no outstanding questions, so I'll turn it to the audience real quick, see if there's anybody, anyone wants to, uh, uh, to ask any questions before we uh, before we close out the session here, um, all good questions so far. Um, it's interesting to know that you're you're seeing a lot of demand for uh, for Proxmox, and I, and I'm guessing that's coming out of the whole uh, VMware. Um, I'm not, I don't want to say mess, but mess. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll give yeah. a couple of quick couple of minutes here to write in any questions that they may have. Otherwise, uh, we can call this uh, call this a webinar. But um, just while we're Great. waiting for that, I just want to take a couple minutes on it to thank you and, and CSG as a whole for partnering with us to, to put mm -hmm. on these webinars. Um, I know you have a lot on your plate with um, with everything that's going on, so I uh, appreciate it. Um, while we're talking, there was a question. Was there a Zen Server 8.x future version to support LTSR, LTSR uh, 2402? Is it what I think you meant to write, David? Yeah, my under my understanding is the the new Zen server 8.x release will support the latest LTSR. That's what I've heard from PM. There's no release date. Um, they're they're really keeping that close to the vest. Um, so it could be later this year. <laughs> it could be next year. Um, but I, I think Citrix as an organization is trying to be more conscious of. Um, you know, security in terms of the products that we release are secure. Um, the products that we release have regression testing as best as we can do to make sure there's, you know, no unintended consequences for an upgrade. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Rather be safe than sorry, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think that's it for questions. So once again, thank you everybody for attending. Um, this session was recorded. So I believe our marketing team will be sending out links to the recording. So you, if there was some some, uh, some information you missed or you wanted to recap, uh, you'll have that uh, link available to you. 
And uh, keep an eye on our websites, integra.com slash events for future webinars, future in-person events. And uh, I look forward to, to chatting with everybody. And with that, thanks very much, everybody. Bye, everybody.